busy in your absence, Mr. Freeman. The Source Engine gives us capabilities in four main areas. Believable and realistic human beings. Graphics that were previously only possible in a Hollywood movie studio. An integrated materials and physics system that create an unprecedented level of interactivity. An artificial intelligence that welds these characters, these effects, this world into an experience game gamers have never had before. An enormous number of details go into creating a character like the G-Man. His eyes glint based on a radiosity calculation of the local illumination. They self-shadow and follow you as you move. He has 40 separate muscles in his face, and his emotions are based on a taxonomy of facial expressions created by Dr. Paul Ekman, a research psychiatrist at the University of California. The same system that gives him emotion Pay attention, Mr. Freeman. I'm only going to say this once. Source's capabilities are completely language independent, so it's just as easy for him to speak in Chinese as it is in English. This character technology gives us a very broad emotional palette to draw upon. You'll hate your enemies, and you'll fear for yourself and your friends. Perhaps you'll discover feelings you've never had before. <laughs> With characters that can react emotionally, we need a world that is similarly flexible and interactive. The world of Half-Life 2 is very dynamic. Any surface can have a displacement map which can be altered dynamically along with its collision hull. This terrain system gives us very large open areas that can run on even low-end hardware with its LOD-based system. In Source, worlds are built out of materials. If something looks like wood, it's like wood, it's like wood, if you shoot it, it's fragment like wood. Materials and physics crack. So the set of programs floating on a wood pallet will behave how you expect. And of course, what tech demo would be complete without a giant Materials define the properties of a wide variety of objects, from mattresses to tables to barrels and watermelons. based around shaders, the same approach used to render movies like Toy Story or Monsters, Inc. In this room, you can see some examples of how powerful sources graphics can be. The walls are actually bump map subdivision surfaces. If you look closely at the water, you can see that it refracts submerged objects and properly incorporates a Fresnel term to modulate the surface. Over here, you can get a sense the wide variety of visual effects that are possible using Source on top of a hardware platform like the ATI Radeon 9800 Pro. One of the cool things about Source is that there aren't any arbitrary restrictions on how you can use these visual effects. You can apply a noise function to a self-illuminating shader, you can procedurally destroy an environment map, or you can take a human character and build them out of water. As you've seen, Source has a great deal of flexibility in where you apply visual effects. Source also gives us complete control over the inputs and outputs of the system. You can use this flexibility in some very surprising ways. Enough of the 
this dry technology stuff, let's let's just go ahead and look at the game now.
Mesa was as bad as it could get. Not all of your allies are human. 